Boy, uh, what an aggressive start to free agency for the Lions. I, I mean, we all know the, the potential pitfalls of free agency. Everybody knows it. We don't need to recap and, and go over how it doesn't always mean success. Seems like a really, really aggressive and smart start for the Lions. Another positive, too, guys, is not only were the Lions aggressive, they hit their targets. You know, they, they targeted these guys and they got them. They got yeah. Trey Flowers, who they wanted. They got, you know, Danny Amendola. They got Jesse James. And they were targeting Coleman from the beginning, and they got all their targets, which is whether you like it or not, people always say, who are you going to get to come here? Well, they got the guys they wanted, right? Yeah. And I'm not necessarily thrilled with them. I don't hate them, but like I said, they were aggressive, and they got who they wanted. Uh, here's some of the feedback that's come in. Welcome back, Doug. How was up north? That's from Mike. Uh, no worries, Doug. Gator Kang and Jenkins will protect you from all the evil HVAC systems. Uh, Fat Doug is back. It's from an unnamed texter. You really thought that you were just cramming your body with meat. I think Doug has the bovine flu. After eating all that brisket, his body rejected all the meat. Uh, maybe Doug came down with the bird flu with all the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> a lot of flus, man. A lot of flu. Mm-hmm. Kind of was the flu in a way, wasn't it? Yeah, but I got a flu shot. So? Yeah. yeah what does that mean? And? Uh, <laughs> I didn't think you could get the flu when you had a flu well, shot. Did you feel achy? Yep. Did you have a fever? Yep. All right. <laughs> you had the flu. I very well may have. Uh, 248-539-9797. Let's go to Brian in Ann Arbor. Hi, Brian. Doug, first of all, glad to see you recovered from your brown bottle flu. We were all very <laughs> concerned. I wish I'd earned it that way. Well, you know, there's reality and there's what you tell us, but yeah. we'll leave it at that. All right. Um, personally, I kind of like yesterday. I mean, all this is predicated on the players working out, but – for so many years of us kind of saying out loud, it seems like the Lions are just making this up as they go along and they don't have a plan. It certainly seems that they have a plan and they're at least sticking to it for better or for worse. Um, They've gone all in on defense. I hope that they continue to because right now with the signings that they made, um, it sets them up in the first round of the draft to like you were going on, maybe taking an offensive playmaker, which I hope they don't go that route, but they're in a position uh, to turn a few position groups from an area that may have had been positions of need to an area of strength. Yep. You know, you look at the the players that should, in theory, be available to them. They're in position to come away with, you know, Devin White, Creedy Williams, Montez Sweat, Ed Oliver, Christian Wilkins, a, a litany of other guys that would allow them to shore up, you know, the linebacking core or the defensive backfield, you know, the safety or the D line and turn those position groups from areas where there was, you know, need to an area of strength. Um, and that's what I think is kind of cool actually going into this. You know, you look at the D-line, they can move flowers around it. I mean, how would you feel, you know, they, let's say they draft Montez Sweat, then you got another guy on the edge right there, and then you can move flowers all around the line. Um, you know, they can take Greedy Williams at it, and then they got – Big play slate, Greedy Williams and Coleman in the slot. Suddenly, like, that's a pretty good-looking secondary right there. Um, you know, they could take Christian Williams, put him on the line. I mean, you got you got some options now. Um, for once, I don't feel like we're pigeonholed into an area. Um, now, and I, I, I kind of thought, that Brian, that free agency was going to di- dictate where the Lions would go in the first round. I don't think that's earth-shattering uh, kind of analysis there. But because they made such big sweeping moves, these are moves that are – they're not depth moves. Like we've seen before, they made some moves for these are moves for starters. They're just starters. You know, I think that they did overpay a little bit um, for Coleman. Um, like the player, don't love, you know, what's reported to be the contract. But with that being said, the Lions aren't in a position as an organization where you can get guys to come here on the cheap. You want to get guys to come here, you're going to have to overpay. Um, hopefully, it's just a short term thing and the team gets turned around. But, um, I like where everyone they went to. Uh, Mandola, like, I actually like it, kind of like you guys said. He ain't the player he was a few years ago. But, you know, third and six, third and eight, move the chains. That's what his job is. That's what he's going to do. Um, Jesse James could be the one that really works out to be kind of an under-the-radar one that could make a big splash here. Um, I liked him in Pittsburgh. Like you said, there's only so many throws to go around in that offense. Uh, I think that we're in line for him to have a big season. I really do. I think, you know, I'd have to go look. It strikes me that in Pittsburgh, they had an inordinate amount, an insanely skewed number of targets to two guys, Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. And that one of them was going to demand the ball or throw a hissy fit. 
Um, but that means the tight end numbers, uh, while not huge, I think he had 30 catches and two touchdowns, Jesse James. He could have been underutilized there. I don't feel like he's a tight end one, but he might be. Might be in disguise. And you mentioned Trey Flowers. These are Trey Flowers' snaps per game at, at different positions. Pro Football Focus had this, but I looked at it on a per-game basis. A-gap, 2.67 snaps per game in the A-gap. B-gap, 8.3 snaps per game. Over the tackles, 3.9 snaps per game. And on the edge, 30 snaps a game. So he is, he is lining up all over the defensive line. That is a versatile player who, oh, by the way, was top 10 in the NFL in pressures and very good against the run. Uh, let's go to Matt in St. Clair. You're next. Hi, Matt. Hey, boys. Happy Tuesday. You too. Listen, I, I think what King poo-pooed was actually the most important thing, and I think it's culture. These guys all come from winning cultures, um, and with us not having a leader in the locker room, i.e. Stafford, I think this allows – these guys to stay, need these guys need to pick up a little bit more. You know, you're not going to hear the people complaining about how hard the workout is, or or not saying that we need player meetings because you know of what thing you know this or now other thing. So I think that bringing these guys from winning cultures who know how to win is going to be incredibly important for all the new guys and the culture that Patricia's trying to develop. And we got to get rid of this SOL moniker somehow, right? So we got to bring in winners. Well, wanna... you know, if I think back to players that were questioning the workouts, wasn't Glover Quinn at the front of the room one of the guys? If I recall correctly, I, I, maybe somebody could correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I thought Glover Quinn was. And if Glover Quinn was, Glover Quinn was also one of the first ones gone after the year. And I hear you. There was also a thing where someone asked Stafford, don't you need a players-only meeting to really get people back together after, like, the one-in-five start? And Stafford's like, oh, no, we don't do that here. Well, maybe in winning organizations like Seattle and New England and Pittsburgh, that happens. And these guys can be in the, lo- in the you know, wide receiver room and the DN room and really tell the guys, hey, this isn't how we do it um, in winning organizations. This is how we're going to do it. And they can really set an example for the new young guys. Well, you can so rest assured that all these guys familiar with Patricia wouldn't have signed here if they weren't willing to play for him. And by I mean play right. for him, I mean, you know, sell out for him. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Ticket text 97136. Kyle, you're next. Hi, Kyle. Hi. Um, I think Jesse James is going to be one of the most underrated signings here, you know, I, I think it was 50% of his snaps he lined up as a blocking tight end. But yeah, he's he, a good blocker. He's got some sure hands, you know. I, yeah, I think he's going to be a good security blanket for Stafford. Uh, probably ends up keeping Stafford around for a couple more years. Well, it's always the, the blocking aspect of playing tight end. I mean, you want a tight end that can do it all, which is why I'm a Hawkinson fan. But, uh, you know, there's – I see the upside to this signing as a potential home run, although I do want to see the terms of the deal. Well, he's a massive target. He's six foot seven and 260 pounds. He's a massive target um, who hasn't really been thrown to a whole lot during his time with the Steelers, but it's not like he, they, they totally ignored him either. I mean, the last three years, 59 targets, 63 targets, and then last year it was down to 39 targets, but he also had a career high in, in receiving yards last year despite – only catching 30 passes. Think about this. Most targets in the NFL last year, Julio Jones, 170. Antonio Brown was third with 168. Juju Smith-Schuster and was missed, fourth. And missed a game. Yep, with 166. They had a overwhelmingly heavy wide receiver-based passing attack. So that took away from James's opportunities. I think the potential here could be a home run signing. Well, they also had other tight ends that were there, too. Vance McDonald had 72 targets. That's that's almost, you know, twice as many as Jesse James got at the same position. So, yeah, if you get him into a place where he could really really emerge. But what does all this mean for the draft? We'll get to that at 10:50 more your open line calls 971.